Hello out there, this is Cole Anderson here, your host as usual on The Independent Pianist. And today we've got a bit of an exciting change of pace with a live performance uh, from the archives. This performance was filmed during the summer of 2021 during the Center Stage String Summer Institute at the University of Michigan. Uh, this was one of the faculty concerts at that program. So as you know, I do quite a bit of collaborative work in the course of my day-to-day existence and uh, so one of the things I do is I work with string players quite a lot so Center Stage Strings is a fabulous program that I played with a couple of times um, there are students of all ages high school age college students and the level is absolutely unbelievable at this program uh, many of these kids are playing at a simply world-class level and they have of course great faculty always every year and great performances and it's been an honor for me to join the faculty a couple of times over the years, uh, including last summer. So if you're a string player and you're looking for something to do this summer, I do highly recommend this program. It's a fabulous program. I'm sure you'd have a great experience there. The director is one of my good friends, uh, Danielle Belen. She's a fabulous violinist, a really great performer and mentor, teacher, all around a, a quite remarkable personality. She basically started this program from scratch uh, in California. And when she got this position as a professor at University of Michigan, she just brought it with her, and uh, it's been doing well ever since. So it's really inspiring how successful she's, she's been with this program. And overall, just a really inspiring musician to work with. So I've worked with her in performances and with her students very frequently over the years. That's certainly been one of my most fruitful collaborations and has taught me a lot about performing and about how to make music in a collaborative setting. She's kind of remarkable. She's, she's one of these kind of teachers who's very caring, but also highly demanding of her students. So uh, exactly the kind of teacher that I had actually when I was a student and uh, that I aspire to be as a teacher as well. I had several teachers like this who really pulled my best work out of me. It was very exhausting, but uh, you know I'm always grateful for that kind of input that I got from those sort of teachers. So I she really holds her students to a very high standard, and it really shows in the confidence and authority that they display in performance. So anyway, we'd worked together many times before this, this concert, but this was actually my first time working with uh, Dr. Leo Singer, the cellist on the, on the concert, and I, did, I had a blast working with him. He's a great guy, fabulous cellist, um, very interesting personality. And right now he's coordinator and distinguished artist of cello at the Robert McDuffie Center in Macon, Georgia. Um, so that's a really cool gig, and I, I think this group really gelled together quite well, considering it was kind of a tight turnaround at the time. A little bit of a white-knuckle ride, for me at least. So I think we decided on the repertoire for certain uh, at the end of June. I scrolled through my text messages, and I think it was June 28th. And the concert was slated for July 10th, so I had about 12 days to get this really quite difficult piece under my fingers. And luckily I had played the first two movements before, so that wasn't so bad, but never the last movement, which is obviously the most difficult, as you're going to hear. So I remember being pretty nervous going into this concert. I had a lot of other stuff I had to take care of at the same time as I was trying to cram learn this piece. And it was only really in the last few days that I started feeling really more solid with everything. Uh, but the performance came out well. I won't say too much about the composer or the piece here, as I actually gave an introduction for the piece during the concert, so you'll hear that in the video. Um, suffice to say, though, that Paul Schoenfeld is one of the most interesting and original composers of our time. He's not so well known as some others, perhaps, but his compositions have an incredible depth and intellectual rigor behind them. But I'll let the music speak for itself. I have put some markers for the form in the timestamps, so you can kind of follow along with that and get an idea of what's going on with the form of the piece. Obviously, I'm not doing as detailed an analysis as I would normally do in one of my performance videos, uh, but that's compensated for, I guess, because you actually get to finally see me and not just my hands. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this performance. Um, until next time, this is Cole Anderson signing off.
beautiful music for you with my esteemed colleagues, Daniel Belen and Leo Singer. A quick word about the composer and the piece. Uh, Paul Schoenfield, in my opinion, is probably one of the greatest living composers uh, in the world. And he happens to teach right here at the University of Michigan. <laughs> right, indeed. And uh, besides that, he's also a fabulous pianist, both in the area of jazz and also in the classical world. So this piece, Cafe Music, was one of his first big hits. And it goes all the way back to 1985. And what happened was that uh, Paul Schoenfield sat in for a piano trio at a high-class restaurant. It was called Murray's in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And apparently this trio, they played everything. If it was like light classical or you know, vernacular music, they could, they could do it all. And Schoenfield was really taken with this kind of smorgasbord of music that they were presenting. And he wondered if he could just take it and put it into a concert piece. So that's, we got cafe music. <laughs> so you're going to hear all different kinds of styles in here. There's ragtime, there's stride piano, there's Broadway music, there's Hollywood, there's uh, music that could be in a Viennese operetta or that could be played by a gypsy orchestra. You know, there's everything in there. And the great thing about it is it doesn't feel like just a random hodgepodge because it's all just synthesized with Schoenfield's absolutely unerring uh, compositional technique. So the form of the piece is actually not that different from what you'd hear in a Beethoven trio, for example, or a Mozart trio. It's sonata form, but it's all through the lens of the late 20th century genius. So without further ado, we give you Cafe Music by Paul Schoenfield.
Thank <laughs> you.